Coming up on the Gino Oriema Show, presented by UConn Health. This team doesn't really have a pulse. Danger field with the finish. Katie Lou Samuelson for three. Some teams, they have high blood pressure. Like, it's constantly, they play like that. This team doesn't play like that. Also, is there a current coach that you're inspired by or that you want to emulate? I would want to be a lot like Danny Hurley because I used to be like that when I was his age. He's a reminder of don't ever lose that aspect of it, you know? I can't do what he does because my, my body wouldn't hold up. Also, we go behind closed doors in Gino Wired. Snap the ball. No lob passes. Snap it. 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 That and much more on the Gino Oriama Show. Together. One, two, three. Together. Together. Welcome to the Gino Oriama Show. And Gino, <coughs> it's great to be back here with you for another season. We're a couple months into the season. How are you feeling about your team as a whole? I think it depends on the day. You know, um, we have our moments where we're really, really good. And I get pleasantly surprised, you know, because, um, you know, with two starters that are brand new. And then with, you know, those kids coming off the bench that haven't played. You know, there's other things that I'm impatient about that, you know, I'm constantly complaining about, trying to get better at. You always have to have that spot. And when you're on offense, you have to have that spot. And when you're on defense, you have to have that spot. Look for that cutter. Make sure we look for the cutter. Look for that cutter. Given what we've accomplished to this point, it's as good as we could have hoped and maybe better. Well, there was a couple changes uh, in the offseason, most notably Marissa leaving and Jasmine coming mm -hmm. in. How has that changed the dynamic with the coaching staff? Not as much as if we had brought in someone completely new. You know, the fact that Jazz had been here for two years and she was familiar with the people and the environment and the expectation level. And so it was kind of a smooth transition. I guess we, we looked around after when Marissa thought this is a great opportunity to coach. We looked around, and I remember CD and I looked at each other, and we said, we need somebody young in here. We got a bunch of, bunch of people that are, you know, we've been around a while. So I think we, we, we found the right person for, um, for a lot of reasons to do the things that we felt needed to be done going forward. With the way the last two seasons ended. Did that change the way you approached things this season? Not that much. I think I think what changed, which changes every year, was let's find out what we did that makes no sense and it only worked because of who we had last year. And that stuff won't probably work this year, given our personnel. So for the first time in a while, we had to make some changes in some things that we do offensively and some things that we do defensively. But in terms of um, how do we approach our team or what are the things that we've talked about or what, are, you know, what have we stressed, that, ha that hasn't changed. You mentioned you have two new starters this uh -huh. season. You always talk about your team's identity. Do you feel like you have a good idea of what this team's identity is at this point? Uh, somebody just asked me that recently, and they said, uh, what do you think, like, for instance, the Notre Dame game? What, what takeaways from that game? I said, well, we, this team doesn't really have a pulse. Like, some teams, they have high blood pressure. Like, it's constantly, they play like that. And this team doesn't play like that. This team is like this all the time. They don't get jacked up sky high. They don't get down and feel sorry for themselves. They pretty much just stay on that even keel. So if somebody say, what's the personality of this team? I would say they don't have one. And maybe that's what helped us stay calm on the road, that we didn't you know, hyperventilate, like, oh, my God, 
like sometimes teams have a tendency to do, players have a tendency to do. Uh, we don't have anybody that does that. So that's a good sign, I think. I hope that as we move along, we can create some spikes. But um, right now, I think that serves this team well. Well, somebody who really shined in that Notre Dame game is Kristen Williams. Yeah. You have some fresh faces on this team. What has the impact been of those freshmen so far? Well, she's had the biggest impact, obviously. Um, you know, Kristen, first of all, she's a natural born scorer. She doesn't have to be told all the time, listen, when you get the ball in your hands, we need you to score. That's who she is, that's what she does. So she has to be reminded sometimes because she wants to run the offense. Like I wanna be part of the starting five, you know, I wanna make sure that I contribute to, you know, Lou and Feast and these other guys. And she has to be reminded sometimes that, hey, you know, Kristen, what makes our team really good is when you catch the ball and go to the basket and get a lap. She goes, I can do that. I said, I know you can. So every chance we get, we throw it to her and we tell her to attack the basket. And she probably finishes around the basket better than anybody we have, which is unique for, for a young player. When I spoke with you about Kristen Williams, she reminds you of Brianna Stewart. That has to be a pretty big compliment coming well, from you. You know, in November of Stewie's freshman year, she was exactly the same. I mean, she was... She just played. She was fearless. She just did, this is what I did all my life. This is what I did. I just get the ball and I go score. And she really didn't think too much about what if this happens. Obviously, she doesn't have, you know, she's not 6'4". She doesn't have the wingspan, you know, all that other stuff. But in, in mindset, she's got, she's got the same mindset that, that still we have, for sure. Count it, and one. Olivia, Olivia's on, on the other side of the spectrum. She doesn't have that same aggressiveness that Kristen has. She's more passive. So every day is a challenge to get her to be more aggressive. And lately in the games, she showed some flashes. And hopefully we can build on it. The Chino Oriema Show is presented by UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Team doctors for the UConn Huskies. Hopefully everybody recovered a little bit yesterday and um, got your legs back. And more importantly, got your uh, mind and, and your energy back and, um, and are ready because this is going to be a really important week for us. It's not going to be easy. All right? it's, it's not going to be easy. All right? We show up, we get our work done, and then we get on to the next thing. Hopefully we'll be a lot better team and, and be better at a lot of things at the end of the week than, than we are today. Okay? So let's get some work done. Let's go. Together. One, two, three. Together. Let's go. Three lines. Let's go. Let's go. Way to work, Feast. Way to work, Feast. Snap the ball. No lob passes. Snap it. 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 Outlet. 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 Cut hard. Get the guy out of there. Run, Feast. Run, Feast. Higher. Higher. Good, good, that's enough, that's enough. Good, 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 good. Gino, some people may forget that Katie Lou Samuelson had surgery in April, and the issues she was having with her ankle were a mm -hmm. big part of her season last year. Mm -hmm. How's she doing now, is she 100%? She's closer to 100% than any time since she's been at Connecticut. You know, it's kind of remarkable that she was able to have the kind of season that she had last season, given the severity of, of her injury. So getting it cleaned up and giving her the confidence, like I'm, I'm, I'm 100%, I feel good, it's stable, it's, I can do whatever I want, not have to worry. Having to sit out all that time that she sat out probably helped her as much as the surgery did. Mm -hmm. And 
being able to, to see things a little bit differently, have a different perspective because you're watching all the time. You're not in the middle of it. So it's helped her a lot in being better able to direct what we want. And it shows from the beginning to now, from the beginning of season to now. She's been, one, much more aggressive. She's rebounding more. She's getting in the lane more. And she's talking more. And she's directing more. And that is, a, is just a sign of confidence that you feel good about yourself. With your seniors, Katie Lou Samuelson and Nafisa Collier, how do you feel they're embracing their leadership roles now on this team? Well, Fisa hasn't been that much different than she was as a, as a freshman. You know, she is who she is. She has a certain personality type. She has a certain temperament that has been consistent since day one. She's not one to be very emotional, very extroverted in a lot of ways. She doesn't say much. She just wants to be able to say, look, this is what I do to help our team win. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And she's really good at it. Sitting down and talking with somebody about, you know, helping you fix this or let's go, you know, have a team meeting. Not going to happen. It's not who she is. So you can't fake it. So Crystal is one way. Lou is a different way. And Fees is a different way. So our three upperclassmen, when you throw them all together, they have a pretty good idea of what has to get done. And they each go about it three different ways. Crystal's been pretty incredible. Open look, Dangerfield for three. Dangerfield with the finish. Spectacular pass from Dangerfield. What does she bring to your team? I don't know what else she can bring um, from a guard standpoint. I mean, you look around and, you know, I guess there's a lot of really good guards around the country. I can't think of anybody up to this point that's had a better start to the season than, than, than Crystal's had. She's shooting the lights out. She's running our offense. She's playing better defense than she's ever played. She's taking on responsibility for what happens on the court. Whereas before, it wasn't, you know, it's not my fault. I mean, why don't you, you know, why don't you talk to... Gabby and Kia and those guys, why are you looking at me? And now it's, I'm taking on that responsibility on, my, on myself. I don't need anybody to tell me that. And that's part of growing up. That's what has to happen. If you want to get to that level of some of the elite guards that we've had at Connecticut. As a point guard, you want her to be a step ahead of you. Mm -hmm. You want her to know what you're thinking. When right. I talked to Crystal, she said, I still have to lean on him sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where do you think she's at in that development? When she says that, it's partly because the confidence <clears throat> to do whatever I want with the ball. That comes with a lot of responsibility. And I had this discussion with her recently. You know, you, you have free reign on our team. Crystal! Win this game today. Win this game today. You have the ball and you can do whatever you want with it. And the responsibility that goes with that, you have to know when to do what. And you have to have the confidence and the courage that I'm going to do what I need to do. Dangerfield puts it up and in. What if it doesn't work? Well, that's too bad. He's going to get really mad at you. Right. What about it? What about it? You got to do what you have to do. You have to decide, this is what I'm going to do. And if it works, you know you're going to get a, man, that was amazing. It's hard to imagine a more satisfying win for Gino Oriema. That was pretty amazing, I got to tell you. Right there. And if it doesn't work, you're going to get something other than that. <laughs> but that's part of, you know, taking on that responsibility. You can't have all that freedom without the responsibility that comes with it. And once you take responsibility, then you're gonna get praised and you're gonna get criticized. And you can't be okay with just one of those things. And she's gotten closer and closer to that. You've talked a lot about this team having a big dichotomy between the starters yes. and the bench. Yes. How have you tried to resolve that? I've tried really, really, really hard and now you're asking, say, well, how's it going, coach? 
How's it going, Coach? Not so good. I go back to what I said about Crystal, that confidence level. Mm -hmm. It's about five players here who, this group of players is extremely confident in their abilities and in themselves and each other. And then you got this other group that's not necessarily confident enough to be able to help to the level that I want them to, or they want to. So that's one of the big dilemmas in, in, in sports. How do you give someone confidence? People think, well, you have to show confidence in them. Well, they also have to show confidence in themselves. And they also have to believe that that confidence is real. So how do you have real confidence? Well, you have to know you're good. How do you know you're good? You go out and you prove it every day. How do you prove that you're good? Well, you have to have confidence. So it's nonstop. And I, I think as we work really, really hard with the players and they get better, I think they'll become more confident. You know, anybody out there that's watching the show that thinks you don't have confidence in so-and-so, you wouldn't either if you were me because you watch it every day. And you go, well, why don't you have confidence in them? They don't have confidence in themselves. So you got to get to that point where it's real. And that is a different timetable for every player. And it can't be just, well, coach, you, you, you can give someone confidence. Well, someone who's really good, you can help them with their confidence. But somebody who's struggling because they're not quite good enough yet, that's a difficult, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are doctors. They could come in and go, you know, I'm very confident that you could do this operation instead of me. <laughs> but that don't mean anything. I don't think the patient wants me operating on them just because the doctor's confident in me. They want me to be confident in me. And we're not there yet. Gino, you have a new coaching counterpart on the men's side of things in Dan Hurley. He had some really nice things to say about you welcoming him into the fold here at Connecticut. I know you don't have a ton of time, but have you watched any of the men's games and what have you seen yeah. so far from him? Yeah, I've gotten a chance to see parts or most of a lot of the games. It's a different, it's a different look. It's a different mindset. It's an aggressiveness and an attitude that's um, reflective of, of, of who he is. Mm -hmm. People sometimes forget, part of coaching is they say, is, well, the team is gonna take on the coach's personality. And sometimes that's true, sometimes it's not. But in this case, I think it's true. You know, the players on the team have embraced it, you know, Danny's personality. And they're responding to what he's, what he's teaching. Mm -hmm. And you can see it. I think for a new coach, that's, that's step one. And he's accomplished that in a hurry. For years, you have allowed other college coaches, not just in basketball, to attend your practices. <clears throat> yeah. Why do you do that, and what do you get from it in return? Well, I mean, generally, I get nothing in return. I mean, it's not like they pay to come watch practice or, you know, they all bring a great recruit and leave them here, you know? It, <laughs> What I do get maybe is, uh, hey, somebody just came up to watch practice. They had no idea what we do, how we do it, and now they have a greater appreciation for how hard we work, and that's why we have the success that we have. We don't just win because we have really good players. And I think when people come watch us, especially if it's other women's basketball programs, I think they, they appreciate it. They appreciate more what we do and, and, and why we have the success that we have. Is there a current coach that you look to, that you're inspired by, or that you want to emulate? Um, yeah, I mean, I would want to be a lot like Danny Hurley because I used to be like that when I was his age. There is an intensity you guys both have. Yeah, I used to be like that when I was his age. He's a reminder of... Don't ever lose that aspect of it, you know? I can't do what he does because my, my body wouldn't hold up, you know? But he's, he's really reminded 
me every time I see him work about the fact that um, this is an emotional game and you have to put a lot of that emotion into it. You guys are going to have to fight for every thing this year, every possession. You are not going to get anything easy. So don't think this is going to be easy. It's not. This is just the beginning. It's going to be like this for six months. Every single possession. Right? So you got to be ready for it. Come on, come on, dribble at him right here. And, and I think that some of that's missing. The emotions are missing, you know? I like to say that you watch people play and they look like they're playing at gunpoint, which is sad. So you have to maintain that fighter in you. Do you know why is it important for you to keep learning from different coaches and their philosophies? Because you're never, you're never finished learning there's never a time when you go, you know what, I got it. I know all there is to know about what I'm doing. The minute you reach that point is probably the minute you stop getting better and you should probably just get out and go do something else. Because to me, every time I watch somebody play, I don't care if it's a high school team, I'm... 100% certain that I've come out of every single game that I've seen of a good team play basketball, high school, college, pro, men, women, doesn't matter, where I've come out of it thinking, you know what? I bet you if we did that particular thing right there, I bet you that'd be really cool. And I've come back and I've done it. And it was really cool. So there's never a time when you watch a game where you sit there and you go, eh, what can they teach me? I don't already know. A lot. A lot. To me, it's never ending. It's never ending. And I bet you there hasn't been two years in a row out here where we've done the exact same thing two years in a row in everything we do. There's always changes based on what I've seen and what I've had a chance to observe.